So thank you all for joining. And you have chosen to join this um, because you're interested in learning about how to launch a brand with a sustainable business model. So let's get started. So pretty much today, this is the agenda on the screen. Um, the main, main purpose is that I want to highlight to you that running a sustainable business model is more than just the fabric. It's more than just the sourcing. It's more than those decisions that always pretty much people relate back to those key factors, um, fabric, how have you produced, etc. Being sustainable is way, way, way more than that. It really does come down to how you can run a lean business model. And what that means, again, is reducing your waste. So that, again, can be how you can maintain um, not wasting too much fabric, of course, but also it's how to actually not have stock left over, how to actually try and think in a sustainable way that you're producing to the demand in the market. That's really, really fundamental to being sustainable, but also to being profitable. So the topics that we're going to go through today are on the screen. So the first one is probably one of the most important. I literally can't talk about this enough. And that's actually how to find a product that's in high demand, because if it's in high demand, it's going to sell itself. Topic two is how to plan um, an e-commerce collection to ensure high sell through. So again, that's that's the goal. You don't want to be launching a fashion brand and have too much stock at the end of each season. And then topic three is how to build an effective sales strategy for your niche. So again, when you're launching a new business, a new collection, you shouldn't just be focusing on, oh gosh, I need to launch it tomorrow. You know, that must happen. You should be thinking beyond the launch. You should be thinking about, okay, I've got this product. I know I'm going to launch it this day, but actually, how am I going to sell it? So you've got to be creative and, and pretty much forward thinking. So let's um, just give you a quick intro. Who am I? So yeah, pretty much I'm Carly. <laughs> you may already know that. And I launched Unzipped Fashion Connections back in 2019. So pretty much, um, yeah, Unzipped is broken into two different um, sections of the business. One is consulting. Um, so I work with generally micro fashion brands and I help them with sales growth strategies. So they may have launched and they're not selling or they may have launched two, three years ago and they're you know they've got slow sales and they need help so I'll work with clients on numerous different bases dependent obviously their, ch their current challenge and then the other side of the business is I write um, and create online fashion courses so how to launch a how to start a clothing line is um, one that's live now and then I actually have another one launching on the 31st of August which is pretty much scale up how to promote and sell your brand so looking more at the growth strategies and just so you know my background I have pretty much always worked in fashion um, so I, I'm, I'm English as you might be able to tell so uh, my career started off back in the UK um, I've also so worked in New York and obviously now I'm working in Melbourne and I've worked for some really big brands um, as well as micro brands. So pretty broad spectrum of experience. So the purpose of today, I have already talked about it, but I'm just going to mention it again. The major, major, major takeaway that I hope that you'll gain from this is that I want you to start thinking and making decisions based on data. A good decision can be a starting point, but you should never proceed on just, oh, I think this is a nice idea or, oh, my mum likes it, so I'm going to do it. You really need to be thinking in a business manner and you need to be backing your decisions with data because, again, if you don't do this, how do you know that a customer is going to buy it? So everything I'm going to talk through today is really telling you, teaching you to focus on making data-driven decisions. So the outcome, you will have a great understanding about the business side of launching a fashion brand and that sustainability in fashion is not just about the fabric that you use. So let's get started. So topic one. So topic one is all about how to find products in high demand. So I'm going to walk you through these three steps and I'm actually going to show you. So do two live examples of the tools that I'm recommending that you use. So we'll start with what's your starting point. So this is, again, I'm, uh, you know, you could be at different stages of your journey already, but it always starts with what's the starting point. So you may have, again, an idea, you may have a good, 
feeling, we now need to validate, is that actually a good idea? Is there actually demand for your product? Is there actually people wanting to buy it? So a starting point can simply be that you're deciding to launch um, plus size denim because you once went to buy plus size denim and there wasn't actually um, you know, a good enough product on the market. So it can be from a personal experience. It can be from a pain point or it can just be you've simply identified a gap in the market. So that's what I mean when you simply just need to have a starting point. The next section to walk through are what are your options? So you actually need to take that further. So cool, you've highlighted that it's denim, for example. You that then need to be a bit more specific. So again, everything that we're walking through today is to really refine, refine, refine again. So the options that you have available when you're you know, looking at validating a product, are you gonna offer it for men, female, or kids? Is it gonna be summer or winter or both? Is it gonna be sustainable or not? Is it gonna be luxury? Is it gonna be high street? So really start to whittle this starting point down and into categories to really start to find this niche in the market. So again, this is just simply a starting point. I'm not asking you to make a decision yet because you need to validate it first. You need to actually check that the data um, is backing you up. So how do you know um, if the, the, your choices, your starting point is correct? So pretty much what you're wanting to find is a big enough demand for your brand. So pretty much, yeah, it gives you scope to obviously grow. And also you're really wanting to find a product where you're going to have a competitive advantage. So again, there needs to be demand, but there doesn't need to be too much competition. That is a really critical um, kind of two metrics that you need to work to. So with the second points I mentioned, and a, a competitive advantage can be pretty much in many different formats. So you could have the competitive advantage because of where you've chosen to source the fabric from or the, the trims. It can be a competitive advantage because you're choosing to be the cheapest uh, brand selling that product. So you don't have to be like way out there wacky with a competitive advantage. It can just be a factor that's better than the rest of you know, your competitors that are selling your type of product. So it is really critical that you are critically anal analyzing your decisions and that, again, you're not just saying, you know, going on a whim and just progressing into launching a product that you really don't know anything about. So, yeah, so those, these are the questions on the bottom. What's going to make you unique? And what value is my product going to offer a customer that no one else is offering? So really make sure these questions, you answer them and you answer them honestly. So next, the next kind of validating step um, to make sure you're kind of questioning all the, the right factors is uh, pretty much where you're going to launch. That's a huge, huge decision that you should be making to make sure that your product, again, is in demand in the right market. So say if you're based in Australia, which we all are, then, you know, are you going to launch in Australia because your product's in demand in Australia or actually is it in demand in Europe? Therefore, you should be following what the data is telling you. So the two tools I'll show you in a second will help you to answer this. But again, don't just launch in Australia because you're based in Australia. That is not a smart decision. You should be launching in the market where there's actual demand for your specific product category. So again, this is just a list of territories on your screen. And I would choose you to choose a territory as opposed to whittling it down, you know, Southeast Asia to a specific country. Think of a region and focus your efforts on there first, launch in one territory, and then you could choose to grow. So that is a starting point Explain. So you're starting to, you know, push yourself, challenge yourself to answer questions. The next really important phase is to actually now make a data-driven decision. So let's get stuck into this bit. So yeah, pretty much I've kind of already said that. We're going to I'm going to now use the example swimwear, just so you know. Um, so we're going to talk about swimwear and we're going to run it through um, some tools which will tell us if there's actual demand for it. So 
Paid tools are the best. Yes, it goes without saying. So you may have already heard or used it. I'm not sure, but Google search terms. So that is um, it's the, the hyperlinks here. That is a paid tool um, and it is the best, of course. It's Google, um, so it will give you really fantastic answers. However, if you want to try a couple of free tools, there's Uber. Uber suggests, which was created by a guy called Neil Patel, who is literally amazing. If you've never heard of him, definitely sign up to his newsletters. There's like so much advice about marketing, SEO, etc. And then another one is Keyword Generator. So we're going to look at um, both of these today, but you make the choice. You can either choose to pay for it or you can choose to use the free versions. So to complete the task, you first need to know what are your parameters. Very, very important um, that you actually know what, you know what you're looking for, what's your benchmarks. So with your keyword, with your starting point, the product that you want to create, but you're not sure if there's actually demand for it yet, you're going to enter it in these tools. And what you're looking for is high search volume low competition. That is the dream. So obviously, if it's got medium, you know, medium search volume, medium competition, you start to question your decision. And obviously, if it's a complete opposite way around, you know, big fat, no, walk away from it. So pretty much with looking at these parameters, there's two forms of competition to look at. So when we're looking at, um, yeah, no competition, there's paid and there's SEO. So by this, that's meaning um, cost per click. So how competitive is that specific product category, that keyword um, in your specific territory? How, you know, if it's $10 for um, an ad behind that keyword, pretty, you know, pretty high competition. And again, there's SEO. So that's actually the organic form of marketing. So that is pretty much your parameters to use when looking at these tools. So let's talk through the first ones. The first one is mentioned, Neil Patel's Uber Suggest. So yeah, we'll, we'll run through this um, so, you, so you can understand it. But what the, what's the beauty around this tool is you would put in your keywords. So again, I said we're going to use swimwear as an example. So you might be thinking, okay, I want to produce swimwear in Australia. Cool. That is very broad, very generic. So what we're looking for in these tools is suggestive words. So let's say in Australia, actually more people are looking for women's swimsuits or women's plus size swimwear, for example. So you're wanting to refine the your niche pretty much. You want to find something that is more unique, that still has high, high demand, but low competition. So again, being something so generic like women's swimwear, you know, how many brands do we all know that there are out there? That, that there's so many, especially in Australia. So it's, it really isn't good enough nowadays just to launch swimwear. You've got to find what the demand is. What are people searching for? So by using these key, these tools, pretty much these keyword tools, they're actually telling you what people are searching for on Google, on YouTube, which is a huge, you know, the biggest, I think, search engine. And then there's Amazon, again, huge, especially the, the biggest search engine in the US, for example. So really critical that you narrow down your product category and start to niche it out, which will enable you to focus on producing a product that's likely to sell more because there's demand for it. So this is an example, we're going to look at it anyway, but this is what the, the key kind of metrics that you're looking for. So I've already mentioned that volume is demand. And then this is where we're looking at um, the competition. So this is actually giving you a point score of 100. Um, so 100 being high competition. And this is obviously giving you an actual dollar value. So you can see if you were to try go after this keyword being I want to produce women's bikinis is going to cost you approximately $1.25 to do any paid marketing behind it. So this is just kind of backing up what I've um, already recommended you look at. So let's go through an example. So as mentioned, we're going to stick with the word bikini uh, swimwear. Um, so this is Uber suggests. I haven't 
clicked onto anything else. This is just simply the, the home page. So as mentioned, you can pay for this. You can do a free trial. I've actually think I've just got it on free trial. So apologies um, if anything goes wrong right now, but at least you're seeing the, the true version. <laughs> so Australia, I'm now pressing Australia. Pretty much this goes back to my first pointers. Where are you gonna launch your starting point? What territory, what region do you wanna launch in? So obviously if you've got, um, you just want to launch in uh, Europe, for example, you'd have to search by all of the countries in um, Europe. You can't make it generic. But pretty much here, it's critical that you actually look at the data in the country that you're going to launch in. So I've clicked Australia because that's just what I'm going to use for this example. Um, so let's go for, let's just go for women's swimwear first. So you can kind of, again, this is um, just something to mention first. I'm obviously searching for women's swimwear right now. We are currently in July. It is winter in Australia. I can pretty much predict that this number is not going to be like blowing your mind out of there because really, again, you have to be critical and think about if I'm searching, you know, how many people are searching for this right now? So it's giving you live data. It's not giving you how many people search for it back in March. So this is something, again, you need to be aware of. And, you you know, you could keep tracking this every single month to see what, what's happening. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? Um, so that's just a tip um, in addition to what's on your slides. So here we go. Hopefully it won't take long to load. So just to quickly explain it, keyword overview, that's what we're on right now. You can start to look at keyword ideas, keyword lists, which is new and content ideas. So some really, really fantastic tools. And again, this is free. So women's swimwear this month, there were 3,600 searches for it. So here it's actually categorizing it as average. So there you go. That's telling you that there's an OK amount of demand. Here you can see again, if, if I wasn't on the free day trial version, you can see that actually, so I retract what I just said, this is actually trending up. So there's more volume in June than there was back in May. So that's actually fantastic um, you know, for you to see. You can see mobile, you can see desktop. So pretty much this is average, it's okay. SEO, that's actually not that bad, to be honest. And again, cost per click, pretty fantastic to be paying close to a dollar. So let's just say, let's look at, um, whoops, plus size swimwear to see if this is, um, you know, any better. So here again, it's average, so not that much better, but we can clearly see here that there's less uh, competition for plus size swimwear in Australia. So you might already be thinking, okay, so this is actually a bit more of a unique opportunity. I could actually find a product that's still got its average, but don't forget it's winter, average search volume, but it's actually got less competition. Interesting. So let's then look at plus size bikini if we niche down any further. Here we can see it's dropped quite considerably. The SEO difficulty has actually gone up. So that's quite interesting. So maybe plus size swim, can't spell, swimsuit. So interesting. So less, like a third of a bikini um, is in search volume, but the SEO difficulty is less again. So that's quite interesting. So that actually you could take a step back and say, okay, plus size swimwear as a category is actually more interesting. In this scenario, maybe you don't have to take it down a notch and niche even further. So this is what I encourage you to do. Whatever your starting point is, you know, jeans, um, footwear, you know, vegan leather boots, whatever it is, start to enter in here and play around with different variations and really start to read this data to understand what the opportunity is for you. One thing I probably should have done in the very um, first example is here, obviously you've written it. 
And down here, this is where it suggests to you ideas. So you've written, um, I've written this, that it tells you the volume, but this is where it's actually giving you specific, this is what people are searching for on the, the web. So specifically people are typing these keywords. So here you can actually see one piece is different. So you could view all keywords and really start to see cover up. Okay, interesting. What are people searching for? Where, you know, what product is in demand? This will help you to start to build your designs, build your collection. Again, building products that are going to answer people's pain points because they are actively searching for, for these products in Google. So I feel like I could talk about this more, but I'm conscious that I've kind of talked about it quite a lot. But this is free. You can see I haven't paid for this. Um, have a play. This is so, so, so important. And down here again, um, I think lower, I've, I've, I've taken it off. You can actually start to see like any questions, um, any articles that um, feature specific, you know, plus size swimwear um, options. So definitely, yeah have a go with this, I really encourage it. Okay, back to the presentation. So we've gone through that. Next one I wanted to show you because it just brings a different angle again. Keyword generator, which is the other tool I'm about to talk you through, is just gonna show you a different, um, it's, it's seeking its information from different search engines. Um, on the keyword generator, it's actually um, looking for, you can choose to look at Amazon and YouTube specifically. So as I mentioned, they are major search engines globally. So don't just rely on Google's data, source from, you know, two other really, you know, critical um, search engines pretty much. So I think I already mentioned this, but Amazon is, you know, bigger than Google in the US and YouTube is just like, crazily growing, super important. So people actually, you know, start their product searches on there. So it's important that you look at it. So let it, let's just go for another example. So this next one, um, so you can, that's the, I never actually know how you say this, um, Ahrefs, however it is. Anyway, this is the specific tool that I was talking about. Here you can see that you can look at Google, you can look at YouTube, you can look at Amazon, Bing. So pretty much I'm, I've told you the ones that I'm recommending. Exactly the same process that we have just done. Critical that you actually look at your launch territory to gain the data. And again, let's say this time, um, let's look on, sorry, I forgot to press that first. Let's look at YouTube and let's look at the exact same example, women's swimwear, and let's see um, what happens. So on YouTube at the moment, so pretty much the phrase matches men wearing women's swimwear. So that is the what people have recently searched for on YouTube under that specific phrase. Maybe let's try Amazon because hopefully that might be a little bit better. Uh, women's oops, swimwear. Okay, so here we go, better, M makes a bit more sense. Amazon is obviously selling products. So for, for Amazon, the volume for the last month has been 150. And then here we can say it's got very limited um, related keywords. It's specifically looking at a brand. So Amazon obviously isn't huge in Australia. It's, it's bigger in different territories. So again, use, use these tools. Um, it's still important to check it, but they may, you know, Maybe Uber suggests would be more um, important for any uh, Australian based um, business. Cool. So that is those two tools explained. Let me just quickly open this up again. So pretty much everything I've just talked about, it, the, the outcome. I really, really, really encourage you to use these keyword tools to refine your starting point to focus in and to start niching down your product category. And please try to do this before you invest a dollar in actually producing the product. Make sure there is demand for your product first with low competition and that you're, you've really isolated what your niche is, what your unique selling point is versus your competitors. 
Great. So the, the, the final bit, whoops, forgot about this, is once you have found it, great, you've used data, you're feeling really confident, validate. Validation is important. And again, everything I'm talking about, and hopefully it's kind of uh, making sense to you, you should never just make decisions by yourself. You know, you, sh you should actually say things out loud. For sometimes saying things out loud, you think, oh, that didn't actually sound very good. Or you'll get feedback from a friend, from a colleague, whatever, that will actually question it or say something that you haven't thought about yet. So I've encouraged you to use data as in, you know, search engine data i'm still encouraging you to use data but i'm asking you to actually talk to other people talk to your target audience so you can simply do this through a survey ask the audience google forms is free um, so yeah you, you pretty much set up your questionnaire and you can email it out you can attach it to an ad or you can use facebook lead forms this does require you to have a facebook ad account or you can use SurveyMonkey. It does cost money, but it's a, you know, a fantastic service if you're lacking in time and you want something that's quite slick. So all you need to do around this is choose obviously your method. Think of your critical questions. What questions do you need to ask your target audience? and create a competition around this, incentivize them. So say, you know, if you enter this, um, give me feedback, there's gonna be three people that win a $10 Amazon voucher or something, like incentivize it. People are more likely to give um, genuine answers if there's an actual opportunity for them to actually profit and make money from it. So what you're wanting to validate, these are just some suggestions, but pretty much you're really wanting to find out um, of your product category, which other brands do they actually buy right now? And about those brands, why do they actually like them? So get them to actually say the why. And find out, is sustainability one of the three reasons that buy a product, which I think is, is, is a critical answer, uh, question to ask in general. Which matters more, price or quality? That will give you a good insight into, into this target audience, which will help you to shape, obviously, what you do with regards to developing your product. And then you can start to niche more. So ask them what product do they specifically prefer to wear and why? Do they prefer prints or colors, et cetera? So I encourage you to try and ask questions that are yes and no answers because people are more likely to give, you know, it's 50-50 a correct answer. If you ask too many open questions, i.e. they've got to write their responses, you can sometimes have people that put NA or they can put really, you know, lame information that doesn't get you anywhere. So make it multiple choice, make it yes, no answers, and you're, you know, likely to get a better response. And just from experience, try and keep it to seven questions. Don't make it too long. And obviously don't make it too short because you'll be wasting your time. So my uh, tip, my survey tip is try and get as many responses as you can. So I'm pushing you for 500, but pretty much try and aim for 200 to start with. Obviously, you know, if you think of, gosh, that's a lot. Well, it's not really, you know, your goal is to have more than 200, 500 customers. So you really want to start to ask as broadly as you can get a genuine feeling of this target audience of really what exactly they're wanting so this again will really help you to actually dig a bit deeper into your target audience get inside of the head and actually make sure that you're producing your product to exactly what they want their pain point their desires cool so the the final bit is you've got your answers back fantastic this kind of goes about saying pivot your Excel sp uh, spreadsheet if you can or group together similar answers. Pretty much analyze your data, like make a clear conclusion of, right, they want value, they want bikinis, they shop this brand because they love color. Like really define what it is that they want. And this again is a data that is just simply validating it further and giving you that niche to follow. So that is topic one that took half an hour, but it's the biggest. So 
the outcome. Once you've done that, once you've done those three steps, you should have isolated your niche that has a demand and has an engaged audience ready to buy it. So again, to link back to the first you know, point, we're talking about how to run a sustainable business model. If you produce a product that is in demand, you are less likely to have stock left over at the end of the season because there wasn't demand for your product. It just simply wasn't going to sell because no one actually wants it. So this really is a critical step to make sure that your sales success is the best it possibly can be and that you run a model that has minimal waste. Cool. So topic two. How to plan an e-commerce collection to ensure high sell-through. So this is pretty much the next step in being sustainable. So the aim of the game, and this does happen a lot, and it, there is no perfect answer, unfortunately, but we all, as a, you know, fashion brands, we don't want to produce too much, but also we don't want to produce too little. So it's a case of finding that fine line, that balance between those two. So the, the aim of the game is to not have waste, to not have stock left over at the end of the season and to actually try and start to think about running a lean business model that is not too alien to the customer. So I'm just going to walk you through considerations that you need to make uh, when range planning your collection. So I guess I just want to start with, I guess I kind of pointed it out, but I can't tell you, produce 50 units of every style. That'll be spot on. It really does come down to you knowing what the demand is. So let's just say we looked at swimwear and I feel like I remember it being 6,000 searches at the moment. So in Australia, there are 6,000 people that have searched for swimwear. Therefore, they're not all going to buy you, are they? There's going to be, I don't know, a hundred brands of women's swimwear you know, divide your 6,000 by 100, that's 600. In a month, you're not going to sell all of that. So you can start to apply some very generic um, logic, some rationale um, behind the numbers. But also, aside from that, you have to then start breaking down that demand into actually how many drops are you going to offer per season? So, you know, are you going to do a spring and a summer drop? And what uh, what are your best selling categories going to be? Use your keyword data to back this up. So say, you know, the keyword data told you that plus size bikini was like the top trend, uh, but you want to sell cover ups as well. So that would then tell you there's greater demand for bikinis. Therefore, you would place more units behind bikinis. Start to consider the size range. So look at you can actually look at this online. So you can try and look for um, the size curve of dresses, like or what's the average size of a woman in Australia. So actually look at data around how many, uh, yeah, what's the average size of a woman in Australia or whatever country, and look at actually uh, sales data. You can Google anything nowadays and. Um, start to pretty much, yeah, apply some logic. Price point, go back to the data um, that you did in step one. So are you going after value? Are you going after expensive? What does your audience want? What did they say in your survey? And then this is just kind of a decision again, back to data. Are you gonna be all about you know high-end fashion or are you gonna be mainstream every day? Finally, once you've got that collection, more the design side, how many channels and markets are you going to launch in? Hugely important when you're planning how many options and units to buy. So if you are simply launching in Australia on your own website, you are then quite you know, singular in your planning. You just have to start to, to do all of those steps for Australia and um, it's, it's quite focused. However, if you're if you're wanting to launch on, say, the iconic and your own website, you then have to start to you know look at assumptions around how many um, uh, bikinis are sold on the iconic um, every single yeah 
every single month. So you can start to kind of Google that. You can maybe reach out to anyone that you know that sells in the account on the iconic and gain that type of data. So all of these things, these are questions, these are pointers for you to actually go and get this data to start to build um, yeah, an understanding around how many units you think you are going to sell. And again, a final bit is when you when will you launch? Because when you will launch is also if you know if you project manage and launch swimwear bang on when you know summer starts and or there's a, a summer holiday, so you know say end of Christmas January. Like if you launch on time and you've got really great marketing, you're going to get the best book for your bang. So really, yeah, when you launch is critical to how much demand there's going to be for your specific product at that time. So I have pretty much broken this down. Um, I won't go through this literally reading it all out because I'm pretty sure you've got access to these slides, but these are just further, I'm breaking it down into detail when I'm talking about how many drops, when are you gonna launch? Again, best-selling categories are really important. Refer back to what you did in step one, but yeah, really consider which you think are going to be the best, but back it up by data. Size range, as mentioned, do some research around that. Go back to the keywords, but also simply hit, you know, tap up Google and, and find out your average dress sizes or foot sizes, whatever. Price points, really important because this is, you know, we're all shoppers ourselves. You, you'll buy a product because it's cheap or you'll, you know, consider an expensive price point so yeah really it's a big decision of how much of your product you're going to weight behind different price points and core versus fashion like that's again something you know your target audience what do they want from you and this all of these pointers and and, and yeah aspects will help you to actually start to build a collection framework. So yeah, go through all of these, start to build it. And as you can tell what I'm again trying to point you towards, just really consider what you're doing. Don't again, just be like, okay, I just wanna like make dresses. I'm gonna make 10 dresses and I'm gonna launch them whenever they're ready, cool. Because like, why? <laughs> why, who's your customer? How do you know it's gonna sell? So it really, really is all about being refined, being planned, being targeted. And this really is going to give you the best success rate um, if you follow this. So this is a really basic table. So I'm not encouraging you just to do this, but this, yeah, this just shows how, uh, hopefully to visualize what I'm talking about break down your categories. So these are the products that you know based on keyword data that people are searching for in the plus size size range. Um, this is the size ratio that you have found um, to be the best, um, you know, uh, sales units by size. These are the price points. So you're kind of gonna stick a bit more in this like cheap to mid price point. This, this is just a real basic version, but try to do something similar. A tip, this is just a tip from everything I know working in the industry. If you've got ambition to, you know, scale up, to launch on wholesale, different sales channels, really the market demands that you would have around 20 to 25 options per drop per season. The average, most, you know, brands would do two drops per season. Therefore, you're looking to have a whole season option count at 40 to 50. So this is a guideline. It's not, again, you know, set in concrete, but this is just, yeah, a, a tip to you to try and, yeah, push yourself to have quite a few options. So once you have done that, you've got a framework, you know your price points, you know the size range, et cetera, great. So that right now is just giving you like, you know, an option. What about the units? So how to actually decide what units to place? Again, I can't give you a magic number. It doesn't work like that. You know your demand, you know the market. For example, are you just launching on your own website in, in Australia? How big are you going? What is the demand in all of those different markets? Write the numbers down, do some logic assumptions. And again, how many options will you sell, etc. So the only way to do this is to, again, 
find a brand that's similar, try and understand, try and look at their sales reports if you can find anything that's published online um, and make assumptions about how much you're going to sell. So again, you need to make sure that you don't underestimate as much as you don't want to overestimate. So try and get to a logical number. And the one thing I can just advise again, if you do have a style that you're going to buy really lean, you're going to go on the lower edge of your estimates. How about then you try and source and produce that product closer to home? So say if you do have a bestseller, you can actually repeat that product in like a four week turnaround or something. So again, your how, how you plan the units behind your product can also come back to where you source and produce it. So therefore, how quickly can you repeat it? So really, again, break this down by month, I'd say ideally by week, look at when you're going to launch, think about how heavily you're going to market it as in marketing um, events, think about any seasonal sale events, and look at it on a week by week basis, and plan that you're going to launch this product on, let's just say Black Friday, you want to sell it within a two month period, therefore, it's got eight weeks to sell within that eight week period, every single week, find out what events are happening, work out your marketing calendar around that and start to write in how many units you think you will sell of that on one channel in one market. And then you'll have total it up. You'll then know for that style, you need to place 150 units, for example. So hopefully that helps. Um, you obviously going, I could go into this so much more, but that's just um, the framework and, and my guidance to you. So now the outcome after this step, so you will have a clear framework to work to. So again, you don't just want to be like, oh, give me 500, cool. You need to actually have a framework, a guidance based on your demand. And really you want to be able to have the, this, this understanding before you go to a manufacturer and try and get your product produced. And they're like, oh, no, you have to you have to do 500, you'll know then that manufacturer is just not right for you. So therefore, you need to go and find somebody else. So it is really critical to help you in negotiations, to help you finding the right manufacturer, etc., that you actually know how many units you need. You know your boundaries. Cool. Final topic. Last one. I'll try to be quick. So how to build an effective sales strategy for your niche. So again, we're talking about running a lean business model, a sustainable business model. It's all about launching a product that's in demand, but making sure that you don't just launch it and be like, cool, I've launched. It's actually how do you sell it? So if I haven't mentioned it already, a major, major, major way to actually successfully sell your product is to know who your customer is. It literally goes about saying they are the number one thing in your life as soon as you launch a product-based business. So when looking at your sales strategy, when you're writing your sales strategy, start with your audience and find out where do they shop. So ways that you can actually start to find this out is to actually start to hang out in Facebook groups um, based around your um, product category, for example. Or you could start to use Reddit and uh, Quora, but specifically Reddit, and actually start to type in questions around your product category, around your niche, like um struggling to find, um, I'm just going to say, plus size swimwear and start to see what other people have commented on it because that will start to give you the, the feeling, the mood of your audience. And also they might reference in there, oh, I know you can buy it via this brand or on this website, for example. So pretty much spend time hanging out in these forums to really understand more about your customer. The major, major, major thing you're wanting to know is what's their pain points when it comes to shopping online. Because let's say they can't find plus size swimwear or they're sick of being charged more for plus size swimwear versus like standard sizing 
or they're looking for a brand that can, um, you know, ship it to them in two days or whatever it is. Learn from the pain points of your customers, because then this helps you to build a sales strategy that answers their pain points that is better than your competitors. So anything that you can answer a pain point, you're kind of instantly going to delight a customer. So really, really focus on finding out pretty much what annoys them and you can resolve it. So yeah, what do they value? Find this out. And yeah, this, this will really help you to start to write and focus your, yeah, how you can build an effective sales strategy. So for, for my advice, and this is something that really has taken its, its, its taken to its own this year in uh, 2021. So nowadays, it really isn't just about selling on one channel. There's something to be said for, for different, you know, being wholesale only and being direct to consumer only. But I would encourage you that you, again, find out where your audience shops. That's more, you know, most important. Don't just make the decision up because you like Instagram, for example. Find out where your audience shops and pretty much choose what channels, therefore, should you launch on. So by doing this, you're actually starting to build an omnichannel approach. So an omnichannel is more than just the sales channel. It's about um, linking together your communication and your sales channels. So, you know, your tone of voice um, and, and bringing the two together, I guess, more than that. So say if you, you launch on The Market, which is a New Zealand platform, they actually work with the warehouse group. So therefore, they can offer your product click and collect from the warehouse group in New Zealand you're probably not going to be able to beat that logistical um, operation. So therefore, is that actually strategically a good place for you to partner with? I'd say potentially yes. So really start to look at where do your audience shop? What you know, channels do they prefer? Are they all about the social media or are they all about like the ease, um, click and collect and start to work out what channels are right for you and make a decision that, cool, I'm going to launch my own website, no brainer. But when am I going to launch on other channels to help you to run this, you know, streamline omnichannel operation? So it has to be beneficial to you as much as beneficial to the customer. So, yes, yeah, so these are just some suggestions on the screen. So to, yeah, to, 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 to talk about it a little bit more. So. Creating an effective strategy comes down to these um, kind of pointers. So within this omnichannel um, strategy, one one thing you're really wanting to do is find the right channel for your product. You know, don't launch on a channel where your product category isn't sold or, or where you know you're not also able to work with that channel. You know, you don't meet their criteria. Launch on time. It doesn't matter if it's your own website, somebody else's website, launching on time, that makes it an effective sales strategy. Create launch suspense. So again, any channel that you're launching on, put it in a plan, know when you're launching, but also market it. Like everything that you do has to have, a, you know, a purpose, a reason. So don't just again expect people to find your product. Know when your date is, work backwards, start a launch campaign in the lead up. Let people know when you're launching and where you're going to be launching. In the omnichannel factor, if you have stock in a couple of different channels, specifically if you know you've got it um, selling on the iconic, the market, and your own, if say you all of a sudden sell really well on one product category and you know that you've got enough stock just for your website, but you've got it listed on two others, you could delist it. So that therefore you're feeding your own sales channels and the same can work the other way with bad sellers. You can use sales channels as more of an option to help you to shift the bad sellers. Um, effective price uh, sales strategy does come down to pricing strategy, which is a huge topic again that I haven't talked about today. But if you want to sell your product, you've got to know who your customer is. You've got to know what channels are right, but you've got to sell it at the right price. Too cheap, you can sell out immediately, and therefore, you know, that's a good and a bad thing. But also if it's too expensive, people just won't be interested. And again, that means you've not looked at data. You've not looked at research to actually check 
what's the competition for your product category by price point? So again, really make sure that it's appealing. Um, and if not, make sure within, say, your selling period of eight weeks, if you get to, um, you know, six weeks in and you've only sold 50%, what are you going to do next? So in a sales strategy, know your life cycle. I have bought this product to sell in eight weeks. Know that if you're still at 50% by week six, what promotions are you then going to do? Or buy a product for eight weeks and know that halfway through that there's Christmas or there's Black Friday or there's Easter and choose to actually run a promotion, not because you've got, you know, poor selling product, because you want to, you know, peak and lift your sales during that time period. So again, everything you do within sales strategy, write down the channels, write down your launch date, work backwards, start to build a marketing strategy. Consider the market and the price point that's right for that channel and for the audience in, in, in that channel. And the final bit is nurture these customers. So it's really, really important in a sales strategy. You've done everything we've just talked about. You've gained this new customer base. Fantastic. But how are you going to nurture them? How are you going to make them be a repeat customer? So ways that you can do that fantastic customer service is a sales strategy, surprise and delight them. And another thing that you should definitely have from day one, even if you're not even selling product yet, have an email sign up option, have an email um, uh, management system, for example, MailChimp, and make sure you have effective EDM, so email marketing. So make sure you've got sequences that welcome them, that thank them, that ask them for feedback and incentivize them once they've made that first purchase into buying from you again. So all of these, again, I've talked about this quite quickly, really be targeted, be strategical in your thinking, write down your plan and pretty much stick to it. Unless COVID goes crazy again or, or the world collapses, you know, you've got no reason to not sticking to your plan. So yeah, these are just some of my kind of major tips which will help you to have an effective sales strategy. I think I've already said this, write it in a launch strategy, definitely. And yeah, just one kind of other final bit, which is always good to look at the don'ts as well as the do's. So don't just, again, know that you're launching a product and just go, you know, fly it out, just launch it everywhere. That's, again, not smart. So don't flood the market. Don't expect success on all channels. So have a, you know, have a contingency plan. And yeah, just be ready to grow. If you get one right, go for it. Go for another one. Um, yes, I think that's it. And lastly, so yeah, food for thought, which is, again, could have been a whole different slide. But one thing I guess I would encourage you is in a sales strategy, it's not a case of, okay, you've done keyword data, you've done X, Y, Z. It actually does also come down to consider how you design your product. So this is a business model as much as it's the design stage, but can you actually be smart with your sales strategy? So you actually produce a product, you sell it brand new, but you actually make sure it's a circular loop system. So you can actually you know, bring the product back to back in, you can incentivize a discount code because they return the product to you to be recycled. So do actually think about, you know, a good sales strategy starts at the design stage. How smart can you be when designing your product? Cool. So that is it. That's me done. So thank you so much. Um, if you've got questions, obviously you can post them now. Um, for me to answer right now. But if you don't want to, you can drop me an email, you can connect with me on all of the different socials I've put on the screen. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much always happy to help and always interested to hear people's stories. So yeah, thank you so much.